Hey everybody, what is up? BBK Dragoon here, joining me. Well, joining myself. You're joining me, really. Oh, that's an awkward little intro right there. I think about restarting, but no. Uh, we're here on Mars, and we're going to be beating Mars today. Now, I've already beaten it, um, and I'll explain that in a second. So, we are coming to Mars. Pretend like it's our very first time. It is your first time if it's the YouTube. And I can safely say I beat the game last night. I wanted to see the Mars missions before I actually did the playthrough in case the, I did some awkward stuff. And I can safely say I'm enjoying Destiny about 150% more above level 15. These coordinates put the gate to the Black Garden near the lost city of Freehold. It's been buried in the sand since the collapse. Now the Cabal occupy the area and most of Mars. No one gets through their exclusion zone. Mars being one of my favorite locations just looks so distinct and we actually are going to get to play on Mars at night. That might be my favorite location in the game altogether. So I went ahead and uh, leveled up my character, beat the story last night. I've been playing some strikes and... Great. The gate to the Black Garden is miles from here and the Cabal got a lock on orbital communication. If you want your Sparrow, we're going to have to break into one of their bunkers and disable the system. It's gorgeous. I mean, it is anybody who has issue with this zone, I'm sorry. I from just a visual perspective, this Here's game is gorgeous. 800 pounds and highly militarized. They blow up planets and moons just for getting in their way. Just so you know what we're dealing with. I like how to we spawn in this mission uh respawning limited already, so you can see things are a little bit edgy. Now, if you're just following along on this playthrough and you're curious to know, well, I need to grind if I'm going to be playing through Destiny. My advice, we avoid engagement until we understand it better. And the answer is yes, there are going to be periods of time where you're going to need to gain a level or two before you continue on to the next planet. But I'm going to let you know that's actually like my favorite part of Destiny has been doing that, doing strikes, doing patrols. Scanning for something linked to their orbital grids going back and replaying story missions over again. That's where things have been shining through for me. Oop, whoa, got stuck there. That one. And we'll put our ghost in here. So I'll try to not give any spoilers away as we continue forward and try and pretend it like it's our first time. I'm a big fan of the Mars location. Everything here I really like. Hello. And here's the enemy types we're going to be fighting on Mars. They're known as the Legionnaire. Big, large guys, but their heads are very squishy spots, just like the rest of them. Um, you have these things called Phalanx, which are like the... Uh, if you haven't played Halo, Jackals in Halo, where you have to shoot the shield and then move on from there. So like, if I just shoot his shield, I'll get the invulnerable sign. Yet if I shoot his right side of the body. I don't really know how that guy got in so deep unless he just jetpacked over me while I was talking. Um, if you shoot the shield invulnerable, but if you shoot their hand, they stagger and, and it's a cool mechanic. I've I always enjoyed it, especially in Halo games, but they've done a good job of it here. When you pop off, see how their heads like just spew that nasty gunk. Now when I first showed up here I was level 14 and I'm almost level 19 so you're gonna see a different pace at which you're beating these guys. And First time through, yeah, it was a lot harder. I'm going to let you guys know, doing the Mars Zone solo without really leveling up that much or grinding, it was a challenge, man. Yes, the Centurion shoots really big AoE stuff, and it's annoying. Uh, we have some new weaponry to work with. Um, I've been really enjoying the sniper in the game. It feels a lot like a Halo sniper. What was that noise? Uh oh uh, the sound design is something I haven't talked about enough, and I really think it should be highlighted. I think this could win an award for best sound design of the year. The overall, like, the ambient noise that it sets up is great, but the weapon noise and just... If you have a pair of um, surround headsets, I'm using Astro A40s, and they're quite a bit old, you know, they're, they're going on like five years old at this point, but it's just superb. Superb. Um, the noises, the things that surround you... There's a lot that it does good, and I'm enjoying it more and more, you know. I feel like around midway through the moon, I was sort of whining because it felt just more beta-e. Doesn't mean there's uh, sh not shortcomings. The story itself is fairly short. 
sparrow is accessible. Now we'll ditch that. Let's head toward the gate. Okay, so now we can use our sparrow. Increase the road. Yeah, we'll just do that. It's fine. So we can hop on our good old sparrow. I love the way the zone looks. Love it, love it, love it. Just this. Oh. <laughs> well, look for yourself. After Venus, the cabal things were looking up. With the Vexier. Maybe they know something about the gate. There's a few outposts nearby. Let's check them out. Been playing strikes. You want to get in the middle of this? That's your call. No, thank you. I do not want to get in the middle of this. The moon strike is my favorite by far because I think it shows the most potential in terms of boss encounters. The other strikes are very similar to Devil's Lair. They usually have. Well, the bosses. Outpost should be up ahead. I can dig into the systems and see what I can find about the gate. I bet you can. The bosses are pretty similar, except for the boss on the moon is really challenging. You have to really use Look sort of a some dynamic teamwork and and work together to get things done. Oh my gosh. Woo! But leg is hot. So we're just gonna hop over here. Burn our ammo while we can. Hello. I thought we'd get it there. Guess not. So at level 15, you unlock a second subclass. There will be three subclasses for each of the classes. Um, subclass is basically the route or skill tree you want to take yourself down if you're familiar with WoW. You will know class specs. Every class in WoW has three to four specs, mainly three. Unless there's something crazy like a druid in which you can sort of mix and match and do some weird things. And it just gives you different abilities and allows you to play the class in different ways. So if we come in here, I'm going to have to upgrade something. I'm a void walker. There's the sun singer, which are basically sun. This is more using that purple void time and space stuff. So upgrades glide to improve initial boost speed. Great. Let's do it. Ooh, big boost. I like that. That was fun. So that's going to drop some people. Don't want to get hit with the ship blast. Now, from a content perspective, I'm just going to let you guys know I, I'm... <laughs> I'm okay with the length of the campaign. I'm okay with the length of it. What I'm not okay is the way they wrap it up. I won't give any spoilers to that because you're going to see it. But... This feels like an appetizer rather than a launch, and that's fine, but, you know, this is really a prologue. Now, we did see with the beta that Bungie has the power to be able to turn things on and off. That Centurion's getting really annoying when I'm trying to poke that corner. Um, they do have the ability to turn things on and off, like the zone of the moon. So, my hope is that there's more content on disc than what we've seen so far, and that's going to be enabled in the coming weeks as we um, get the special events. Now, right now, there's a multiplayer special event going on. That was quick. Oh, my gosh. I think that's the boss of this little fight. Right yeah, it is. Hope this key works. <laughs> that is the uh, boss of this game, or this mission, excuse me. So... My hope is that when these little weekly updates start happening, Tuesday is the day the Vault of Glass raid goes live. Now, they had promoted this as being like the most difficult thing ever, and it's going to be very challenging to beat. I hope it is that way, because in the tower, I see a lot of people who are almost level 27 already, um, just through their gear and whatnot, and that's a lot quicker than what I would have expected. Do I think it's a huge issue? No, I don't think it's a huge issue. But if people are downing Vault of Glass day one, which I think they're going to, Let's see what they know about the gate. you're going to see some people who are not motivated to, uh, to put a ton of time into the game. Because as of right now, there's just not a ton once you get to your max gear score. It's very pretty, though. The beauty is they've got a foundation here that is phenomenal. Something that they should be very proud of and something that is very new. There's a lot here. I'm not sure they even understand what the gate is. That's but our mission. Take a look at this guy's gear. Garden, 
It's a warlock, Looks I think. Like yeah, that's some pretty balls. stuff. It's a cool band. Auto rifle. Unique looking helmet. Hey, bud. I don't think I look too shabby myself, but that's just me. And that is our first mission on Mars. Mars is just a beauty. Beautiful zone. Love it. Uh, missions are going to be... Well, you'll have to wait and see how they are. I don't need to give too many spoilers away. So thank you for watching. I don't think we're going to get any gear I really care about. Well, actually, that's a pretty cool rocket launcher. And yeah, so I will see you in the next mission.